everyone. This is Rachel back. All right. Hey everyone. This is Rachel. And today I'm going to do my second quarter five star books. So this is for April, May, and June. And so for my second quarter, my reading slowed down a little bit. I, as I talked in another video, I don't read to escape. And so when everything starts happening, I go into, hey, I need to, what do I need to do to fix things, get things set up so everything goes smoothly, so then I can enjoy my hobbies like reading. Um, so I did slow down my reading. I read a total of 12 books, three were four star reads, and nine were five star reads. So even though I slowed down how many I was reading, I actually had a better quality of reads. And I think that also helped that. If I wasn't feeling a book, I just immediately put it down. I didn't sit trying to wait to see if I would get in the mood. Now, I am a huge mood reader, so that doesn't always help anyway. But I did finish 12 books in this past quarter. So to start off, the first one is Strange Horizons by Abby. And this is actually a collection of short stories. I use this book as my prompt for transfiguration because it had all every single short story features some sort of transformation, whether it's physical, like I think the first one, um, and this is blurbed on the book, it fe uh, features a child turning into a cat. But some of the other stories weren't just about physical transformations, it was also about emotional and mental, personal transformations. Overall, it was a very good collection of stories. I do think the audience for this is very broad. I think that children could enjoy it, especially middle or the middle grade age and adults. Like I said, I got this book from my parents. So older adults can very much enjoy this as well. So the second book I completed, I also completed for the Owls Readathon, um, and I completed it for my Defense Against the Dark Arts. And this was The Deep by River Solomon. And that's normally what I hear people say is by River Solomon, but it does fully say with Debbie Diggs, William Hudson, and Jonathan Snipes. From what I understand reading the end acknowledgements of the book is River Solomon got the idea based off of a song from Clipping, who got the idea for their song based off of another group. And unfortunately, I did not write that down. But if you've read this book, listen to the acknowledgements and go look up the before creators as well. Um, it seems like this is very much an interconnected work. And from what I understand, the audiobook is read by David Dix, if I remember right. I think that is what I've heard another booktuber say. I read the physical version, and so I didn't have the problem that I've heard other people who listen to the audiobook um, where they were confused when it switched character point of views. Um, for me, it was very, it was a very obvious difference. But so basically the story is about mermaids and these mermaids are the ancestors of, no, sorry. These mermaids are the children and what's the word when, not ancestors, ancestors is past, but what's the future, like, pro Progeny? I'm gonna have to go look that up. Yes, the word I'm looking for is progeny. So these, uh, which is a descendant. Descendant was the other word I was looking for. These mermaids are descendants of pregnant slaves that were thrown overboard when they were dead or almost dying. Um, and it talks about how I don't think I can say anything more about this book without getting into spoilers. And for this quick review, that isn't what I'm wanting to do. Uh, so go read the book. It's a really good one. So then the third book I completed was number three. So for um, this was the first book that I completed in May. Since April was abysmal, I only read two of the books that I had planned to read for the readathon. Um, I really felt like I was in a reading slump and with the pandemic and full blown and, or, and with the stay at home orders, you know, in full process, 
I decided to treat myself and I bought two books. And so one of those books was Six Weeks by Mer Lafferty. And this is a reread for me, actually. I read it when it came out um, and I knew I wanted to own it. So for me, I, I, I bought it and once I got it, I immediately started reading it. And it still, for me, it still holds up because I have it on this list as another five-star read. But this is an adult sci-fi, and in Murr's own, in, in Murr, the author's own words, it is a clone murder mystery in space. And that's not giving anything away because that's how the book starts, is all the main characters are in their cloning vats or coming out of their cloning vats, and they're discovering their dead bodies. And so they're trying to, so they immediately know that they have to figure, oh, and they, yeah, so they discover their dead bodies and realize that their most recent memories were not transferred to them like they should have been. And so they have to figure out what happened, what's going on. Yeah. So that's the premise of the book. Like I said, still holds up. It was nominated in, so in the year it came out, or it came out in 2018, I believe, and then in 2019, it was nominated for the Philip K. Dick Award, the Nebulas, and the Hugos. It didn't win any of them, but it's still an amazing read. So number four, and I finished this for the Tomes Marathon in May, was Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie, and this is book number two in the First Blade series, and you are continuing to follow the characters set up in the, oh, sorry, I guess it's the first Law series. The, the Blade itself is the first book. So yeah, you're following the characters further on. And again, it's the book two, so I don't want to go into too many spoilers. Or I don't want to go into spoilers, but I really liked how we got to see a more nuanced view of the characters. And some characters that I found it a little bit annoying in the first book, got to be fleshed out more, and I think characters that I saw more as, like, they're straight, you know, lawfully good, however you want to call them, they went on a more morally gray range for me. But very good. I'm excited to finish the third book, which I plan to do this fall. So the fifth book I finished that was five stars was, is actually a novella, and this is Carpe Glitter by Kat Rambo. And I would say that this is a contemporary fantasy slash paranormal. It starts off with, or the main character has inherited her grandmother's house, and her grandmother was a stage magician. And there had been a falling out as the main character was growing up between the mother, between her the character's main character's mother and her grandmother and the main character never understood why but she always felt like they would play her off of each other and so really I think the main theme of this one is it's about dealing with grief and secrets and in the end how death can actually free us or at least that's what I got from it um, and none of that actually gives it away, since you know from the beginning that grandma is dead and now main character is going through her things. So number six, now this is the second book that I treated myself to buying, and this was, or this came out in March, I believe, and the book is The City We Became by N.K. Jemison. And I read the short story, which is like the first chapter of this book that came out a couple years ago, which is why I was intrigued to pick this one up. Um, and this is actually my first full-length N.K. Jemisin novel. I haven't read any of her other ones, even though they are on my to-read list. Um, so this is what I would call an adult contemporary fantasy. There are some sci-fi elements, but it seemed more fantastical than science. And, I mean, at least for this one. I know it's going to be a trilogy, so maybe throughout the trilogy I'll see more uh, science elements come out. But right now, it's... It, it's still more fantastical for me. Um, this book is set in what I would call modern times New York, like in New York that I could go visit to, to visit today. And it follows the people who become the avatars for the boroughs of New York, as well as the, yeah, no, so it's the boroughs of New York avatars that you're following. The short story um, who you, and the main character you meet at the beginning is 
the city overall, and the boroughs are like the support for him in his battle. So I was reading, I started this book actually in May, and I finished it in June. And for me, it was very interesting as I was reading it, because that's when um, the videos came out about George Floyd, and then the Black Lives Matter protests were going on around the city. Or not around the city, well, it happened in my city as well. Um, but around the country. And as I'm reading this, my husband is, and I are also watching the protest on the news. And it really, for me, like I said, I like to read to put things into perspective, to help process what's going on in the world, and to see which way the world thinking is going. And for this book to be, you know, con for me to have that contrast against the Black, Li Black Lives Matter marches and everything that was going on around that, I think was actually the perfect time to read it. Um, there's a scene in the book, uh, it's set in Inwood Park, I believe, on Manhattan, and when I read it, I was just thinking to myself, I'm like, really? I mean, to me, I was disgusted that something like that could happen, but I'm like, okay, this is a book, and then in June, something very similar happened in real life and was reported on the news. And so for those of you who have read this book, you're going to know what scene I'm talking about. And I don't want to ruin it for anyone else. But then I was just like, oh, oh shit. I was like, N.K. Jemison gave us a very accurate portrayal of each of the boroughs. And I know that she lives there. So I'm just like, now I really do feel like I could go to New York and I could go to any of the sections of New York and be like, oh, I know what vibe I'm going to get here. So I am excited to read the rest of these books as this series comes out, and I know that I'm going to be reading more N.K. Jemisin here in the future. All right, so book number seven is Vida Nostra by, by Marina and Sergei Dynacheco, and this is an adult fantasy. I won this on a Kindle giveaway off of Goodreads, and I don't normally read ebooks very often, it's just harder for me to get into because I either have to read them on my computer or I read them on my phone. I more often do the phone when I'm traveling. And so I had gotten this book and expecting to travel at the end of May. That then got canceled because we don't want to get anyone sick. And so I decided to pick it up a little bit earlier than I was planning. Um, it was promoted as a Harry Potter-esque story, but with in like a college setting. I think it is probably closer to The Magicians. Even though I haven't read The Magicians, I watched the first part of the series on Netflix, and just that grittier feel is more what I got from this book. And yeah, it starts off with a young girl named Sasha who is asked to do things that she's not very comfortable doing. And to an American audience would seem really messed up and kind of bonkers. But she ends up doing it, um, especially because she feels like her mother uh, has been threatened if she doesn't, or her, maybe not her mother's like physical well-being, but her mother's happiness. And she this is the only parent that she knows. So she decides to do it and then gets accepted to the school. And you really are following along with Sasha and you're figuring things out as she figures it out. So if you don't like books where you don't know what's going on and things aren't answered, this is not the book for you. But it was a really interesting book. Uh, well, for me, it was a very interesting book because it explored more of the concepts of how do we work in this world. And I enjoyed that. Especially, again, as I was reading this alongside the marches and the protests. I know that this book is also part of a series, but the original, the series is written in Russian. The authors are Ukrainian, but they write in Russian. And only the first book has been translated. What I understand from reading Goodreads reviews, the other books follow different characters. And so I'm not sure if I want to actually read them because I really was enjoying following Sasha and I'd want to know what happens with her and her story. But if the other books get translated, I will probably... While I might not be sure about reading them, I probably still will read the next one, at least to fit, find out kind of how's it going. Do we get to see the next process? All right, so number eight, I read Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Murr, and this is a YA 
YA slash new adult science fiction with necromancers. Now, necromancers isn't a trope that I'm interested in, and so I picked this up because it was nominated for the Nebulas and the Hugos, and I was like, all right, let's go ahead and give this a try. I do like books set in space, and the description kind of had a Cameron Hurley vibe, and I really like Cameron, Hur Cameron Hurley, so I was like, all right. And so as I started reading this book, the first chapter I was kind of like, I'm not sure if I'm buying this. But as I got further into the book, I was really having a hard time putting it down. And it was completely worth it. And this book is about Gideon, Nav, or Gideon the Ninth, who is wanting to run away from the planet where she has been raised and strike out on her own. And instead, she gets tricked into being the cavalier to Harohawk, um, the lady of the house, as she has been called to to go to where she's been called to go to the emperor's planet in order to learn how to achieve immortality. Yeah, how to achieve or yes, where Har where Harhawk uh, is taking up the assignment to learn how to become immortal, basically. Um, I think the char characters were very interesting, written very defined and different personalities for every single person. And I am very much looking forward to Harrow the, Harrow, Harrow, sorry, Harrow the Ninth when it comes out in August. Number nine, the last five-star read for me is actually a short story. And it is Do Not Look Back, My Lion by Alex E. Harrow. Harrow. <laughs> I have a hard time with that one. Harrow. We're going to go Harrow. By Alex E. Harrow. And this is a fantasy short story. It's set in the main capital of a country that has been at war for years and the main character is fed up. She's done with it. She does not want to be living in this place anymore. And her wife ends up pregnant and her all three of her, the other children have gone to be warriors. That's kind of the society's way. But the main character was one of the last people to be a healer. And the wife promises her that this next child is going to be a healer. And we get to see how no matter what we promise one another or want to give one another, sometimes that isn't what happens. And we have to... So really this was a this was about a relationship between spouses and how they decide that they are done with the war that their country, country has been waging for way too long. So those are my five star reads of the my second quarter. If you have read any of these books, please let me know, especially with what you thought of them. And I will talk to you all later. Bye.